Hello everyone and welcome back to another PC build video. Today we are going to be using the second of three HP G1800 small form factor PCs that I picked up off of GovDeals a few weeks back. So these computers by default, they're supposed to come stock with an i7-4770, 4 gigs of RAM, and a 500 gig mechanical hard drive. As you guys can see from the video, it does not exactly have that. What it has is the exact same as what the last one in the last video had. It has 16 gigs of RAM that was added on to the 4, making it have 20 gigs of RAM. And it also has a 256 gig OCZ solid state drive. So, very good find. Again, I found it on the website GovDeals, and it's just a go-to source that I've got, and I've been going there somewhat frequently recently, so it is worth this. Either way. First things first, we need to remove the processor, you gotta take the CPU cooler off of it, take the little thing and flip it up, and just pull the processor out. Of course you do have to remove the thermal paste that is caked down there because it's really dried on, it's just something that happens. You can remove the thermal paste of course by using isopropyl alcohol or even just distilled water and cleaning it off with a paper towel or something. Just be careful not to push the pins or anything on the bottom of the processor itself. After that, take out the RAM, same process for that, stick it as it is for all the others, and the solid state drive, of course. And since I didn't care about the case for this one, I just unscrewed it a little bit and bent it out of the way. For the motherboard, you guys can see right there, it's a new motherboard. I decided to go with a fresh one because I just had this thing about getting used components. I will never get a used motherboard. I don't know why I really do it that way. I just I have a bad feeling about used motherboards. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is. I've never had a bad experience using a used motherboard, but it's just one thing that I'm especially particular about when I'm building a computer. Used processor, fine. Used hard drive, fine. Used solid state drive, fine. Used RAM, whatever, no big deal. But a used motherboard just kind of weirds me out a little bit. Don't know why. So first things first, processor has been cleaned up. I don't know if that's a good shot of the processor or not, because none of that's not the camera. But, you know, just lift that up, you line up the notches, which happen to be right there, and you just sort of let it fall in place. It's in there, everything's peachy, that goes back down, no need to be gentle, and you push that in and that pops off. Simple enough. And then RAM, I threw the user guide off earlier, it's a good thing to actually consult it once in a while, um, that way you can be certain where your RAM will go for how much RAM you're using for your configuration, blah blah blah. For two sticks in this particular board you use the two and four slot, and well, most boards are the same with regard to that, but it's always good to be thorough. So, ta-da. Simple. The only other thing that we would have to put in now onto this would be the cooler and the graphics card. So for this build, we decided to go with a Corsair H60 liquid cooler. Now, that's the back plate right there that I'm holding, and with that you just sort of adjust the standoff pins and push it through the bottom, and then you screw in the actual standoffs to it. A lot of people generally tend to get a little bit scared of liquid cooling. They always assume that liquid cooling is this big, intense thing. But in all honesty, with an all-in-one liquid cooler, it gives you a little bit extra performance, and it does not cost much more. And on top of that, it's extremely simple and straightforward to actually install. There's really nothing difficult about it, so it's a good thing to do. So, a couple cool things about this case. First off, on the bottom right here, you've got your drive base. But on this part right here, you'll notice that well, if we unscrew this little doodad right here, do, 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 that's right. Yeah, a solid state drive bay. It swings out. And then they just come out just like a regular drive would. I think that's kind of cool. I like it. So, that's something we will be taking advantage of, of course. Now, as far as getting the power supply into this case, that's something a little bit more tricky. So, the easiest way would be to go through on the opposite side. Get that spun around so you guys can see. I'm going to pull all of these cables out of the way. We'll deal with the routing of those shortly. But, in the meantime, I'm going to 
get my power supply. And ta-da. Right. Nothing overly special, just a simple 450 watt power supply. Should get the job done well enough for it. We will need to either use a Molex to 6 pin or PCIe, or rather, Molex to 6 pin or a SATA to 6 pin. Um, either one will get the job done. The card came with a Molex to 6 pin, but it doesn't really matter what we go with. So, it is what it is. That said, we should just be able to slide this right on in. Nothing too difficult about that. Just need to screw it in place. So to that, we have a power supply. As far as all of our cables, we'll just leave those all out flailing around, and that'll be fine. Um, now we should put the motherboard back into place. So actually, what I'm going to do, instead of leaving all the cables flailing around for the time being, I'm just going to shove them all in, so when I pick this up and turn it, they don't smack into everything. I'll install the motherboard from this end of things to make my life a little easier. So after fighting with it for quite a while, I was able to get the thing installed. The um, tubing looks a little bit funky, funkier than I would have preferred, but nothing to be done about that, simply just due to the way that it's in there. Uh, the case will still close, and that's all well and good, and the radiator's up top, so not ideal position, but it's fine. So one thing I was asked to do was to put a DVD drive in. And if you notice, this one's actually a Blu-ray drive. Not something he asked for, but something I had around, not in use, fully functional. Um, so, surprise, free Blu-ray drive. The other thing that came with it, that was coming with it, would be the solid state. So the, one of the last things we need to do is run power to everything and of course put our graphics card into place. So let's start running power to that. Now as far as the rest of the cabling is concerned, um, not a whole lot to be done about it. Everything pretty much is where it has to be. So we need to get our graphics card. For this build I decided to use a 1050 Ti for its graphics card. There are a couple of reasons for that. First and foremost, the 1050 Ti is actually a phenomenal card for budget gaming and getting 1080p taken care of without investing too much into it. On top of that, it doesn't require an overly powerful power supply. What I just held on screen a few seconds back was actually a SATA to 6-pin adapter. The card, despite being a 1050 Ti, most of them don't require secondary power sources from the power supply. They can get their power off of the uh, PCIe slot. This one does require power and it does need 6-pin like I had said, so save it to 6-pin gets the job done. The card did come with a Molex to 6-pin, but I kind of lost it, so it is what it is. Either way, now it is time to start testing the games. So with The Witcher 3, this game performed very well. I didn't honestly expect it to perform as well as it had, just to be perfectly honest. Um, with this game, it's running on medium to high settings, nothing on the low end, nothing on the ultra high end, just medium and high, middle of the road, across the board basically. And with it, it performed, as you can see, quite well. It averaged around 55 frames per second, occasionally dropping down to around 50 when it was in more congested areas like cities. But other than that, when out in the fields and everything, when climbing mountains, the frame rate was extremely stable. Even when fighting monsters in tight areas like caves, it was still stable. Cities is well, cities are where it started to slow down a little bit, but not even to a no hugely noticeable degree. Overall, I was very satisfied with the performance of the system with this game in particular, especially considering how big of an open world it is. Of course, we have a few other games that we use for testing as well. With this one right here, Shadow of Mordor, again, it did pretty well, all things considered. It was on high settings across the board, nothing in the middle on medium, nothing on ultra, nothing on low, high straight across the board and, well, it speaks for itself. You will build a tower in my name. Erect a monolith for your bright lord in defiance of the shadow. And of course, where would we be if I did not show you guys some Dark Souls footage? 
So with Dark Souls 3, I had the game running on medium and high settings yet again, and was getting a solid 60 frames per second with only one instance where the game dipped, and it only dipped down to 58 frames per second. So basically negligible, I really can't complain about that at all. So overall, every game that I tested on medium to high settings had phenomenal performance with no major issues whatsoever. For the total cost of this build coming to $520 after shipping it to them, well, there's nothing really bad to say about it. Overall, it was a fun build to work on, I liked the form factor I was working in, and I had a great time working on the build and testing out the game, so it is what it is. Either way, I hope you guys have enjoyed this, if you want to see more, let me know down in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.